Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this video tutorial we're going to be looking at how we can recover from panics within our Go applications. Now panics are something I very rarely use within my day-to-day -day Go application development. Most of the time catching an error from whatever I'm calling and then logging it out to whatever logging system I've got in place and emitting metrics based on these error situations is most often the preferential route. Now, panics are not meant to be comparable to how we use exceptions in other programming languages such as Java or JavaScript or PHP. They are instead a last ditch mechanism that is built into the language that allows us to handle error cases that we aren't able to handle in a graceful fashion. So when we call a panic, it will do two things. It will loop through all of the deferred functions that we have within the function the panic occurs in, and it will then terminate that function. So any code below this panic will not be executed. However, any deferred functions that we run or have registered will be called. So let's see this in action. So print line, I am a deferred function, fmt print line, end of main. Let's open up the terminal and do go run main.go. And you can see this in action. So it calls panic in the go app. The panic is called and then the deferred functions are then looped through. And then the function itself is terminated. So this line of code is unreachable. If we didn't panic, go run main.go. You can see panic in the go app, which is this line here. You can see end of main is called, and then you can see the deferred function is called after the execution or at the end of the execution of this main function. Cool. So let's have a look at another example. Now, in this example, we have a cascade effect when panic is called. So in our main function, we call silly Susan. Silly Susan calls panic and Peter, and panicking Peter panics, as the name might suggest. Now, this line of code is going to be unreachable. When this panic is called, panicking Peter terminates and the call to panicking Peter within Silly Susan is then treated as a panic itself. So this line of code will not be executed. And if we have any deferred functions within Silly Susan, this, these deferred functions will have been executed. Now, in this case, we don't have any deferred functions. This will never be called and this will then be treated as a panic within our main function. And we can see this by putting an additional print line, end of main func. Let's open up the terminal a little bigger and let's do go run main.go. And as you can see, cascading panics, it then calls silly Susan. Silly Susan calls panicking Peter. Panicking Peter is called, it panics, this is never executed. We can see that this line of, ex of code is never executed. And we can see the stack trace. So we can effectively trace this through our application to see where the panic has started and where each line of code is effectively treated as a panic. So line seven is treated as a panic and line 20 is treated as a panic. And again, we can't see this printed out because this has been treated as a panic. Cool. So why is this behavior important? Well, let's imagine you have a REST API and the function or one of your endpoints panics um, when it receives malformed data, say, and it's not handled correctly. Well, the best case scenario is a user calls your API and it crashes once and then hopefully you've got multiple instances of your REST API behind a load balancer so no other clients are impacted. Now the worst case scenario is some bad actor, some hacker realizes that this is the case and whenever they call a particular endpoint with this malformed data, they can effectively bring down all of the instances of your application. Now this is a disaster case for us if we are running an application in production the hacker could effectively continually hit our endpoints, continually bringing down all of our instances and deny the usage of our APIs to any other clients. 
which is, you know, worst case possible scenario. We're not serving our clients. We're not making money. And we're panicking ourselves trying to figure out how we can effectively fix this situation. So how do we thwart these hackers? Well, we can build in recovery mechanisms into our applications using this deferred functionality. So let's do deferred func and let's do if r is equal to recover, r does not equal nil. We can then say fmt print line, print line, hackers have been thwarted, thwarted. Hope that's how you spell that. Cool. So let's dig in a little deeper and see what we've done here. So we've defined a deferred function here that calls the built-in recover function. Now this recover function will effectively stop the panicking sequence and restores normal execution to our application. So when the panic is called, this deferred function will be called. The panicking sequence will be stopped. We'll then print this out. And then Silly Susan will no longer see this panicking Peter call as a panic and it will continue execution as though nothing has happened. Let's see this in action. So let's do go run main.go. And as you can see, we have no panic stack traces down within our terminal. Cascading panics has been called. Silly Susan has called. Panicking Peter has been called. The hackers have been thwarted in our recovery function here. And then silly Susan has finished the execution and then our main function has also been able to execute successfully. Now it should be noted that you can place this recovery function further up the stack should you wish. Let's say we had it in silly Susan. Now what would effectively happen here is panicking Peter would be called or referred to as a panic or treated as a panic. This line of code would never be executed. However, this function would still be executed and the panic would be recovered from. So let's see this in action. So go run main.go. As you can see, silly Susan is called. Silly Susan never gets to finish. And hackers have been thwarted is still called as we've been able to recover. And the main function that calls silly Susan has been able to continue execution as though nothing has happened. Now, finally, let's have a look at this in a production system. So I've lifted the recovery handler function from the Gorilla Mux library. And as you can see here, this is a recovery handler that allows us to ensure that panics within our REST API in this particular example, do not bring that REST API down. What they do instead is if any of the endpoints panics for whatever reason, I'll write header that the status is internal server error. It will then attempt to log the error and the rest of your application will not be impacted. So if you're defining production ready REST APIs, make sure that you have some form of recovery handler in place and this will prevent your application from being brought down by malicious actors. Cool. So that's all we're going to cover in this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.